Yeah, Jeremiah, man. It, let me tell you something, bro. That little dude, Jeremiah, is basically the hardest soul of the, of the fucking Bloody Raw community now, dog. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Mm. Online play. Yes, there is an online scene for Bloody Roar. The game we play specifically is Bloody Roar Extreme. Join the Bloody Roar Discord. Also, I have a tutorial video on how to play it online, so check that out for a step by step guide as well as an online versus series that you can watch whenever you have the time. It's also highly recommended that you get an Ethernet long enough to go from your router to your PC for a smoother online experience since Wi Fi frequencies are not consistent, which can cause lag. I don't care how good your internet service provider is, I highly recommend that you do not play with Wi-Fi because it is the worst thing that you could possibly do. Here comes the new challenger! Hey, aside from computers processing a Bloody Roar game, how about being able to process what's going on in the world of that Bloody Roar game? Whether the series gets a sequel, or a reboot, or a soft reboot, Bloody Roar already has more of an established backstory to its characters and a bit of world building to boot, particularly thanks to Bloody Roar 2's story mode. However, there are a number of gaps in the backstory that, if answered, can create more conflict and more dynamic relationships among them. For example, humans make little to no appearances, unless you count loitering in the background of a couple stages, and yet they're most of the world's population. Now think about the social aspect of being in the Bloody Roar world, namely the human versus zoanthrope tension. Even with the creation of the world of coexistence at the end of BR2, not all humans and zoanthropes will necessarily agree with it. Hell, we as humans are a species which ends friendships or throws punches over using the wrong pizza topping. You think the WOC would just be universally accepted by both humans and zoanthropes? That alone is conflict not just between the two species, but among them on either side who agree or disagree with the WOC. Here's something else to remember about zoanthropes. There are three different kinds. Those who were born with active zoanthrope genes, those who had latent genes which were artificially activated, and those who were human but became zoanthropes through a series of unfortunate experiments. So you've got your pure bloods, your awakened, and your abominations, and they're not all going to like each other. Aside from the impetus to add a new zoanthrope or two to the roster, all this could lead to adding, dare I say, a human to the roster. Give them something to effectively fight a zoanthrope and go for it. I don't care if it's a Kevlar vest and a baseball bat or the goddamn power loader from Aliens. Humans have adapted and survived for millennia, and this would not stop them. 
What should stop is the influx of mystical bullshit. Technically, there was mention of it early in the series, and by that I mean it was just randomly referenced on a Japanese website, but it wasn't followed up on until 3, when things started to go batshit crazy. You could still keep the characters with those weird beast forms, tweak what the beast forms are, and make them work. Even Nagi could be salvaged with better character design, both visually and in terms of her backstory, and a beast form that doesn't scream I couldn't afford the whole cosplay costume. Xeon could also be salvaged by just getting a real beast form instead of Power Rangers Monster number 286. You know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's rein it in and look at what could be done mechanically with a new game. I'd love to see the risk-reward beast drive system from Bloody Roar 2 make a comeback, but keep Hyper Beast in as well. Just don't let beast drives recover health and give it more of an impact on the frame data of certain attacks. If the developers want to save time, and if it's possible to do, they could use the data from a prior Bloody Roar game as a base and go from there, allowing several characters to keep what identifies them as a unique member of the roster. While I have my problems with it as a finished product, Primal Fury slash Extreme could serve that purpose. Patch in some online stability, and print. And for the love of god, do not go full Koei Tecmo or even full Capcom with any DLC. Some skins, some songs, you don't need to go overboard if the game by itself is fulfilling. The rest of the art staff could have some of the old guard return, as some of them are still active today. Composer Takayuki Nagishi still does freelance work. Guitarist Jun Kajiwara, still active. Nauchika Mirishita, aka Caramel Mama, has publicly stated he'd be open to doing art for a new Bloody Roar title. Even if some of them decide not to come back, you could at least go for someone to fill the role who's shown they can pull off that style. Even if a new entry isn't on the docket, just as a general interest check, you could try porting one or more of the non-4 entries to modern consoles. Add in some online play and see where it leads. It worked for Windjammers. Just saying.
dial an extension at any time. For a directory of extensions, press 4. Otherwise, please hold for an operator. Sorry, the operator is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hello. First of all, I just want to say congratulations on your 50th anniversary, Konami. Secondly, on March 23rd of 2019, or the 24th of this month, there will be a project out on my YouTube channel. My name is Jeremiah, but my YouTube is Jeremiah Isaiah, my first and middle name. There's a series that you guys own that I would love, and many others would love to see, have a light of day. It's Bloody Roar. On March 23rd, or the 24th, if you could watch the Revival Plan video by myself, I would greatly appreciate it, and I'm sure many others will as well. Thank you.